Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather wrap-up for you for the weekend. And as we get into the next several days, not really looking at a lot going to be changing anytime soon, but there is some hope of some changes coming our way in the form of shall we say, less hot weather. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Welcome to Weather Overtime. This is our online video weather blog, keeping you informed at 8.03, just past that on Sunday evening. Got any questions? Drop them into the comments section. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, red bar in the bottom of your screen, that's the forecast scrolling on by, or you can get the information again right here at wreg.com slash weather. Again, fairly quiet for tonight. We'll be expecting the possibility of a few more thunderstorms out across the area, but it doesn't look like too much happening for right now. Got any weather reports out there? Let's get your city, state location going on, and also, again, uh, give us your temperature, your rain gauge. If you've got any rainfall out there, wind direction, cloud cover, stuff like that, let's see what's going on. If you're in the Mid-South area, that's great. If you're from outside the area, again, from North Mississippi, West Tennessee, East Arkansas, with Memphis right there in the middle, let us know where you're checking in from tonight, and we'll read off some of those weather reports as we go into the rest of our forecast coming up here in just a little bit. And then also coming up a little bit later on tonight, if we get any extras out there, we'll show you some of the weather pictures that we've got from you out there from News Channel 3 at 10 coming up later on this evening. Now again, much of this evening should be decently quiet. For the next couple of days, outdoor activities are going to have to watch very carefully with what goes on with the possibility of more thunderstorms coming our way. We'll talk about that. Plus, it's mostly cloudy out there, and again, this is a wrong time for that because of the Perseid meteor shower. Basically, the biggest meteor shower of the year is going on right now. But if you can't see it, how are you going to know what's happening? Stay tuned because we've got a really cool website for you to check out and that'll be coming up here in just a little bit. April Hentz, 81 in Eureka Springs, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. Don Garner, 89 degrees in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Hot, triple spaced around Dyersburg, Paula Dew Walker. Uh, thank you very much for that weather report there and welcome to everybody else who's checking in. Sean Wesley, 82 degrees in Memphis. Thank you very much on that. Let's go ahead and get started. For tonight and show you a little bit more about what's going on with the forecast, which again does not hold out much hope of anything in the way of anything involving showers or thunderstorms for the Mid-South to go much past about midnight tonight. Hang on just one second. Let me get this posted here so everybody can see where we're coming from. Temperatures again by tomorrow morning with partly cloudy skies by tomorrow. Should be back in the lower to mid-70s, but not much cooler than that. Dyersburg, if you're checking in from northwest Tennessee, you might make the upper 60s tomorrow, but really should not see too much of anything else of that. Patrick Simpson, snowing in Olive Branch. I'm assuming that's the Olive Branch in Siberia at this point, so thank you for checking in from there. Elaine Harvey. Where's the rain? We'll check a look at uh, Storm Tracker 3S radar here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. And Megian, Megian Dresler, 76 in Senatobia. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Ronnie Williams, 80 degrees in Collierville. Getting the kids out the door, or the teachers for that matter, helping them out the door for their first day of school tomorrow. Temperatures will again be back in the lower 70s by the time we get into very early tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, those extracurricular activities tomorrow are going to have the heat to deal with and, of course, the possibility of thunderstorms. And please remember, again, if there's lightning outside, football, soccer, marching band practice, whatever, if you see lightning, if you hear thunder, practice is over with. Get everybody back indoors again. Let's make certain we all stay safe. It might seem like an overabundance of caution, but, again, don't want to risk any fatalities from lightning out there when they could be very easily preventable by just going inside. So again, something to think about on that for early tomorrow. No earthquakes to report in the Mid-South in the last 24 hours. Some pretty big size earthquakes on the north coast of Alaska. That energy passed through the Mid-South area earlier this morning. And if you'd like to know more about that, check out my social media websites for more information. Thanks to the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis for that check-in there. Right about normal, 94 degrees for a high today, 92 the low temperature. Way above normal on the low, close 
close to 80 degrees at Memphis International. Not exactly close to our normal low temperatures for this time of the year, which should be about the lower 70s or so. As we go into the evening hours, this is about as clear as it gets. Squawk 1111's webcam from the Weather Underground Camera Network in Olive Branch, Mississippi, showing mainly cloudy skies as we go towards sunset tonight. And unfortunately, looking at a lot more cloud cover out there throughout the rest of the area from the track and field facility at Ole Miss. Not seeing a lot of clear skies there. Likewise, around Shelby Farms Park, still some people out on the lake, a few joggers, strollers out there. Farm Road, Walnut Grove traffic moving along, but again, hardly any sunset shots for us to take tonight because of the fact that we have all these clouds out there for this evening. West Memphis, the I-40, I-55 interchange, very quiet traffic tonight, hardly anything moving around out there uh, comparatively for this evening. Lower 80s right now from the West Memphis Airport, so looking at some pretty toasty conditions out there. Celia Horton Lair, 84 in Henderson. Thank you very much. Uh, for that one, Douglas Clark, thank you very much for checking in and for the very kind words. Nice evening in the Ville. Laura Tetley Todd, thank you very much for that. Muggy in Millington, getting some alliteration going on from Peggy Ross Neff. Thank you very much for that. Cynthia Farr Hester, 20%. Yeah, about that for thunderstorms. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast here in just a little bit. Batesville, Mississippi, warm and cloudy. Anita Avery Coleman, thank you. And Trey Harris, 83 degrees currently in Dyer, Tennessee. Cloudy and muggy in Pope, Mississippi. Ba Chapman, hope I'm reading that correctly. Uh, thanks for checking in there. Storm Tracker 3S radar, very active several hours ago. No severe weather to report, and as of right now, most of the activity that we have seen from earlier tonight is basically gone. There's not that much left out there. We'll go ahead and ramp up the sensitivity here for just a little bit and show you a little bit more about what's going on. Looks like a couple of thunderstorms trying to get going once again back around eastern Arkansas, and that could wander again up to around... I-40. This is right about Mariana down to about Rondo and some of those showers into western St. Francis County in Arkansas. This is the western edge of the News Channel 3 viewing area counties, but beyond that, a few showers over Tunica County and then back to around the Oxford area, some showers and thunderstorms trying to get going. Again, these are pulse-type thunderstorms. They develop, drift, collapse, and that collapsing motion sends out a wave of energy which creates more showers and thunderstorms. Now, we've got plenty of fuel out there for these thunderstorms, very humid air across the southeast United States, but most activity is south of I-20 and Jackson, Mississippi tonight, so not really much of anything else out there for this evening, at least just yet anyway. David Newby, warm in Somerville. Thanks for checking in. Uh, 65, John Curry in Anchorage, Alaska. Thanks for checking in and say hello to my friends Scott and Kerry and their family up that direction. James Ivey, 82 and humid in Dyersburg. Thank you very much for that. Clear in Savannah, Tennessee. Shirley DeVore Duran. Well, hopefully you'll get to see some meteors later on tonight because I don't think we're going to see too much in the metro area. Derek Henderson, 81 degrees in Horn Lake, Mississippi, and 78 and humid in Brownsville. Also, Claire Manda Welch, thank you very much uh, for checking in with that one. Temperatures mainly in the 80s right now, still some 90s on the heat index scale, but temperatures nowhere near what they were about 24 hours ago with the extra sunshine out there, so not quite as steamy. If you like this information on your computer system, go to this website address at wreg.com slash weather for more information on that. All right, running the numbers into the rest of overnight. Not seeing, again, a lot of conditional changes out there for the time being, but we may see, again, some showers maybe lingering into early tomorrow morning. I would not be surprised to see a rumble of thunder overnight, but it just doesn't look like a lot going on for right now. Into tomorrow morning, getting the kids back to the classrooms and the teachers as well. Excuse me, temperatures in the upper 60s around northwest Tennessee, lower to mid 70s elsewhere across the mid south, and then more chances of showers and thunderstorms start to spread across the area through afternoon and into evening. And again, that goes right on in through extracurricular activity. So, football practice, marching band, whatever it is outside with the kids. Again, if there's lightning out there, time to wrap things up and get indoors. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. There isn't a risk of severe weather. We'll keep you updated on that if that changes. Changes. And through tomorrow night into Tuesday morning, doesn't look like a lot really that's going to be changing. Now, good news on severe weather at this time. 
We don't see anything else at this point to give also the possibility of severe weather. There will be that possibility of just generic thunderstorms, but as you can see here, no risk of severe weather is going to be expecting at this point in time. Fred Owl Sears, what would the temp be for tonight in Warner Robins? Uh, if you could narrow that down a little bit, I'm not familiar with that location, if that's a neighborhood in Memphis, so if you could give me a better ideas to where that is. Safe travels for the kids going back to school. Cynthia Farr Hester, yes, and to the administrators and the teachers going back as well. Next, again, early portion of this next week, right on into Tuesday, doesn't look like a lot going on, but we still have that possibility of thunderstorms out there, which we're going to have to keep a fairly close eye on. Not much is going to be changing just yet. Now, if everything works way into the future, we'll talk about that in just a second, we may see some more interesting and nicer weather coming on through. In the meantime, for Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday, really little, if anything, is going to be changing. Lower 90s for highs, lower 70s for lows, and those isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms as we go into the early part of this week. Later part of the week, that's where we ramp up the possibility to about a 50% chance coverage through Thursday into this next weekend. So if you have any outdoor plans here, Again, definitely want to get an indoor plan B ready to go just in case at this point. Now, here's where things get interesting. A couple of the computer models going for the medium range forecast that we use for the 10 day forecast here. A lot of them were starting to say a temperature, a bit of a nosedive almost into the upper 70s for highs for August, which would be A, very welcome, and B, relatively unheard of for this time of the year because that's actually our normal low temperatures for some parts of the Mid-South. Now, I'm kind of walking the middle ground right here. Doesn't look like a heat wave, but I've tempered the numbers downwards, trended them down into the mid-80s or so. Whether or not it stays that way, again, by the time you reach this end of the forecast, the numbers are more suggestion. The closer you get to something, the more accurate you get, and that's why we can give you, again, these forecast numbers here. This is more of a guideline than a rule, but at least it holds out the possibility of some nicer conditions out across portions of the area. A couple of storm systems in the Atlantic. The first one is no longer a problem because as of right now, the National Hurricane Center is not seeing any development out of this. Zero percent chance of anything going on here. Memphis in the Mid-South way back over here, so several thousand miles away in the Atlantic. That's one storm system. Now back to the north of that, basically due west of Pennsylvania by about maybe 1,500 miles. There's another storm system here and it's going to be moving possibly into some warmer waters in the west central Atlantic. So the National Hurricane Center giving this a 20% chance of any development. So one storm system left, one not really giving us too much of a problem right now. More information at the National Hurricane Center. Just go to hurricanes.gov and you'll be able to get more information about this straight from the source and that's where we get everything. Wildfire danger in the Mid-South. No burn bans in effect. Vegetation is in very good shape right now. We have two burn bans back into Lafayette and Columbia or Lafayette and Columbia in southwest Western Arkansas, no burn bans for Mississippi, none for Tennessee. So wildfire risk as compared to what's going on out west is looking very good for the Mid-South and no problem at all being seen there. I'll be back on the air with Bob and Josh coming up tomorrow morning, so stay tuned again for more information on that. Now, tonight... Again, the Perseid meteor shower, the biggest meteor shower of the year and expected to be a spectacular one with maybe one meteor every minute or even more than that. And that's wonderful news if we were able to see it. And unfortunately, right now, we've got a decent amount of cloud cover out there. So this is going to be, again, uh, the possibility of seeing, again, not really that much going on out there. Uh, Warner Robins in Georgia. Thank you very much uh, for letting me know about that. Yeah, warm and humid with a few more showers and thunderstorms in that area. I know Atlanta was going to be expecting a lot more activity and into around that particular area, if that's where I'm thinking it about. It could be, again, some uh, possible problems there with a few outdoor activities. So Fred Al Sears and Deb Pierce Rich, thank you very much uh, for the cluing in on that. I'm very familiar with Mid-South geography, not 
quite so much back into Georgia. So overnight tonight, again, very humid, partly to mostly cloudy skies, and again, not great chances to be able to catch the meteors out there for this evening. And tonight is the peak of the meteor shower. From here on out, the Earth goes through the comet debris stream, keeps on going, and our chances of seeing anything in the way of lots of meteors start to go back down once again. So it'd be great to be able to see them tonight, and hopefully we'll get some gaps in the cloud cover, but it's not helping that much. But here's something you can do from indoors in your air-conditioned comfort. If you'd like to try something a little bit different, you can listen to the meteors online. Don't look at me that way. Yes, I, that's exactly what I said. A transmitting site around the D.C. area is sending out a wave of energy in radio frequency format at about 55 megahertz, and there are receivers located in various parts of the country. I believe one that of the main ones is in New Mexico to where it'll listen for shifts in radio uh, altitude. What it does is wait for, again, those meteors to come streaking through the atmosphere, and that will alter the angle and the pitch of the radio waves being reflected back to the ground. And you'll hear that when you watch this website. You'll get sort of a ghostly ping or an echo going on, and that is a sound of a meteor smacking into the Earth's atmosphere and burning up. This is a live display right here from livemeteors.com. And if you'd like to see this or access it, all you have to do is go to wreg.com slash weather and it'll give you all the information that you need to know. But if you're stuck out there, again, what you're looking at right there, those tiny little dots coming down the display, not the main line right there, that's the main signal, but what you're looking at right there, those two areas, that's again a small meteor, a uh, couple of them slamming into the atmosphere. So we are getting some minor echoes for tonight. Once the meteor radiant, the place where all the meteors are coming out of in the constellation of Perseus, the hero, once that rises over the northeast horizon later on tonight, midnight into around 6 a.m., it's a good possibility that this is going to get a lot busier. So even if you can't see it, you can still listen to it. So again, not a bad opportunity to introduce your kids to a little bit about radio astronomy and a little bit more about the wonders of the universe, about how our planet is currently plowing through a stream of cometary debris out there. So again, catching those tiny little echoes out there showing that the meteors are actually slamming into the atmosphere. So this is what we're going to be able to see at this point in time. Again, if you're uh, just tuning in, this is livemeteors.com, but you can get there by going to our website. Go to wreg.com slash weather and scroll down beneath the forecast. You'll be getting a whole bunch of other stuff on there, including uh, heat information, heat safety, and a lot more about our forecast is available on there as well. But you can get to this website by going there, or again, just go to livemeteors.com. Very cool website to keep around for cloudy days. I wish we could see the meteor shower, but unfortunately, it just does not look like we're going to be able to see that for right now. Uh, Carolyn Beatty, Chianacola Chamnus, hope I'm close to saying that correct. When's the best time to watch the meteor shower? It'll be tonight, the peak of it, between midnight and 6 a.m., looking toward the northeast, if you can see that. Again, that's where you're going to be watching the constellation of Perseus rising over the horizon early tonight into very early tomorrow morning, and that's where it's going to look like all the meteors are going to be coming out of. So you want to look away from that location as the meteors shoot away from that. But again, midnight to about 6 a.m., that'll be, again, what we'll be taking a look at for there. Uh, starting to get some real, there was a really big meteor right there slamming into the atmosphere right there. So we are still uh, seeing some pretty good uh, conditions out there for right now. So if you want to listen to the meteor shower, if you can't see it, you can still take part in it. So a great way to learn about science out there as well. One more check of the forecast. Again, for the start of school tomorrow, lower 70s as the day gets going with an isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm. That'll pick up into the rest of the day and around dismissal time and right into around the time for football, marching band practice. There is going to be that potential of showers and thunderstorms out there. So that could be a bit of a problem as well. Check in with my complete forecast and we'll take a look at weather where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones in 
in the United States military, serving around the world. We'll take a look at various outposts from the United States military where service personnel may be uh, staying again, serving their tour of duty. So stay tuned for that. That'll be at 8.45 tonight. And if you have friends or loved ones out there at a particular location and you'd like to see that location pop up on whether where the troops are, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com and we'll see if we can include that. We've got some new additions out there, one at Pearl Harbor and also taking a look at what's going on across portions of Central Europe. So we've got a whole bunch of neat places to take a look at. And again, that'll be coming up here in just about a half an hour or so as we go into the late edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Vince Tetuan, my good friend from Topeka West High School, thank you very much, sir, for joining us tonight, and thanks a lot for everybody for joining us for this evening. We'll have an update on the forecast. We're going to be on a little late tonight. We'll be on again at about 10.20. PGA Golf ran over by just a little bit, so the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10 will start just about 10.20 or so, so if you'd like to see more about that, join us at about 20 minutes past 10 o'clock for later on tonight. That's it for this edition of Weather Overtime. Thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of what's left of the weekend. Todd Demers has your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining us tonight.